D1 Rejects, episode 78, December 12th. Coming at you, we got a really good guest for you tonight, Dante Harrison. Some PSAC representation, West Coast, or not West Coast, he's in just West Side. East Coast. Or, yeah, sorry, East Coast. I'm totally, I'm totally flipped around. I'm thinking West Coast because they played against Mines, so I got all flipped around. But he's from Shepherd University. They just lost in the semifinal round to Colorado School of Mines. Talk to him here shortly. Ty, Jimmy, how are we doing tonight? Doing good. Doing I'm good. blessed and highly favored. <clears throat> exactly. That's how I wake up and feel every morning, especially when we get a podcast. So we've oh, got yeah. a lot of good stuff to talk about tonight. But uh, we'll talk to Dante about Shepard's run at the Natty behind the Harlan, reigning Harlan Hill winner, Tyson Bajant. And now he's also a finalist for the Harlan Hill again this year. Absolute stud at quarterback for the Rams. But Ferris, first Colorado School of Mines in the ship for D2. Ferris looking to be... The first repeat D2 national champion since Northwest Missouri State. They did it in like 15, 16, I believe. So they're looking to uh, make another mark on history there. And then the AFCA, they released their All-America team selections for D2. We're going to take a look at that. A little bit of GLIAC representation on there. Um, maybe not enough. but Snubbed. there's Exactly. But uh, we'll look at that nonetheless. On the NFL side of things, Mr. Relevant is back. The 49ers look scary as hell. Dude. Big time. Big time. Niners are really, really One piece good. goes down, the and they just keep so churning. Yeah. Thankfully, also, we'll talk about Debo and his injury status later on as well. We got some uh, decently good news about his update um, earlier today. Um, the brand new Lions. Not the same old Lions. The brand new Lions. Yeah, exactly. That's deserving of a clap because take down the 10-2 Vikings, even though they were favored, still a huge upset. Like, massive. I don't care what the books or whatever massive. say. That's a massive upset. And uh, Dan left it all out on the field in that one. Fake yes, punt. Did. You're throwing to a right tackle. It's a, you know, a game-sealing first down. And just all the all the pages out of the book, Just there's there's no reason to hold any of that back, right? In this situation where you're really trying to get that wild card spot. We'll talk a lot about the Lions in a bit. Uh, Caleb Williams, he took the Heisman home. Kind of expected that one, but was pulling for Duggan. Was pulling for Dougie a little bit there. I really wanted to see that. But um, Caleb Williams, definitely a deserving, deserving player after the year that he's had. I think we can agree on that. Yes. Yes. Uh, we will talk about TCU, though. And not just Duggan, but Texas Christian, the Horned Frogs, they unveiled some crazy new designs slash uh, renders for some new facilities. Did you guys see any of those? Nope. No, I didn't. Well, that's good. We're going to check them out here good. in a little bit. I'm excited. Did you see Skip Bayless? Uh-oh. I try not to watch Skip Oh, Bayless. boy. What do, you, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> he told... So, Shannon Sharp, they, you know, they was talking about Brady. Of course. Shannon Sharp <laughs> must have said Brady money. wasn't that good. And Skip and Bayless Skip replies, say? that's why he's playing well at 45, and you have to stop at 35. That, that's and then he proceeded idea. to tell Shannon Sharp that... Very different Shannon position. Sharp was like, I'm not, a, I'm not a bum. Like, I'm in the Hall of Fame. He was like, he's way better at football than you ever were. <laughs> and shit, like they, it looked what like. Did, what what, what leg does Skip have but, to stand? Yeah, like, what? It, what kind of you got, is like that? after this, you got to watch the video and you're going to see, like, Shannon Sharp. Like, I'll be surprised if Just, Shannon Sharp is on Undisputed tomorrow. <laughs> it was crazy. He had to, like, take. I don't know how they finished the episode. Let's not have any of those moments tonight, huh? No. No. All right, Never. but no, yeah. Kate, anyways, as always, Kate's not in here. you can watch this episode <laughs> on YouTube if you are watching on YouTube. Hello, don't forget about those timestamps on the bottom. If any of that sounds remotely interesting, skip ahead, find it, get the hell out, or stick around. We appreciate you nonetheless. Listen to us pretty much anywhere, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. Follow us on Twitter at D1 underscore Rejects and on Instagram at Division 1 Rejects to see highlights, all the laughs, all the good times from the show. But first, fellas, let's get into that interview with Dante Harrison. All right, joining us on this episode of D1 Rejects, freshman safety from Shepard University Rams. This guy picked up PSAC Defensive Player of the Week honors back in October, scooped up a fumble for a touchdown, had a pick for another touchdown, both in the same game. Freshman, DB, Dante Harrison. Dante, what's going on, man? Glad to get you on here. What's up? How y'all doing? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great, man. Great. I would just talk about that game, dude. Freshman year coming in. I mean, before that, I feel like you had been – Getting some appearances in games, but really hadn't made your mark. Was that kind of like a coming on coming on the scene moment for you? That'd been crazy. Yeah, that that game that that was a big game, but that was I don't think that was my I don't think that was my moment. I think my moment was the week before that I had a pick six uh, against Lock Haven. That Did was you? the first game I made. A, uh, yeah, that was with the biggest play that I That's had huge. that far. But I started I started the I started the beginning of the season, but I haven't made, really made a any big impact plays until that week. I got you. And it's like, especially coming in, like, as a freshman, I mean, we all of us know, like, 
as soon as you come in here, it's almost like, what do they say? Like getting the monkey off your back, right? Like just making that first yeah. play, making that first pop. Uh, everyone kind of had that one. I know like for me, it was in the spring coming downhill. Yeah, I get the ball on a swing route and go and knock a safety's helmet off. And then right from there, you know, it's like you got the respect to the guys and it just, you just start rolling from there, right? So I imagine your confidence that it just yeah. be crazy uh, coming up those, those back-to-back games, some, uh, some touchdowns. Yeah, it definitely had me feeling good. That's big Got time, some dude. respect for my teammates, too. Huh? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. That's big time. To talk about um, keeping on the teammates, the expectations for you guys coming into this year. I mean, you weren't a part of last year's team, but they had a hell of a run, too. Made it all the way to semifinals. Yeah. Not exactly unknown territory for you guys. So what were the expectations like? And what was it like to, to come into a program where the bar was already set so high? Um, winning. When I, I came to win, I, I knew we was going to win. I, I knew we had a good team. Like, the talent we had, you wouldn't even, like, most some of the guys you wouldn't even think of to be playing, D2. Yeah. Like, the talent the talent in practice, the, the competition in practice is just crazy. I feel like I feel like that Mark you was talking about, I feel like it came in the spring, too, before we even got to the season because okay. we just knew we had the best guys in the PSAC. So playing against those guys and making plays against those guys just meant, meant a lot. That's you. So – I mean, give me a couple of names on the offensive side of the ball. Bajan is obviously the one that stands out. But you guys also had some other ones make those uh, all-region, all-America teams offensive side of the ball. They got to be giving you guys a good look in practice, I imagine. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, Tyson, Ronnie Brown. Yep. Ronnie Brown, he got snub for All-American, too. I just wanted to say that. Okay. Um, uh, Brian, Brian B. Walk, uh, uh, Ronnie Dorsey, Ryan Beach, Marlon Cook. Yeah. Daryl. Just dogs. Darryl, all dogs freshman. over there, huh? Yeah, Daryl Harper, freshman. Cameron Dorner, he's another freshman. Malachi Brown, he got hurt. EJ Morgan, yeah, it's it's a it's a good it's a good running practice every day. Hell yeah, dude! The energy energy you said is just crazy over there. Crazy, just back to back, just like nonstop or what? Ever like even not just not just me, like all our DBs. We got a lot of young DBs too, yeah. so it it get sometimes it get a little hectic in practice, but that's what that's what make us though. I would say, so the team like that that's experienced a lot of winning, I feel like that can go one of two ways. And different teams work out different ways of practice. Like, you have some that are just uber competitive in practice, right, and just going at it constantly, or some that are like, you know, our culture's already built not to take it easy during practice, but it's not like, you know what I mean, like button heads every single day. How do you guys kind of balance that? A lot of, a lot of, I don't know if I can say a lot of button heads, though. A lot of, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of button heads going on. Defense winning more of those or uh, offense still on top? Oh, defense. Blue shirts all day. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so that DB room, you said pretty young DB room. Did you come into that room last year expecting to, to see the field um, a decent amount this season? Uh, uh, me, I feel like I, I feel like wherever I go, I'm going to play because I just got a super competitive nature, like, yeah. regardless. That's like, how you got to think. I just, yeah, I just don't. I just, I just have to play. So I knew I, I, pretty, I had a pretty good – because I came early, so I came in the spring. Okay. So I didn't have to, I didn't, yeah, so I, I was pretty sure I was going to play, yeah. I got you. No, that's, and that's exactly how you got to think. Now, uh, let's get right into it. That loss to Mines, semifinals, this year's playoffs, you make that uh, really big run. Like I said, another run for you guys. Yeah. Talk about that game, man. Uh, tough one. That was a tough game. I, I, don't, I don't really got much to say, but they, I, all respect to those guys, they were dogs. They they got the best of us that day, straight, just straight up. Yeah. 100%. Now, you guys made the trip out to uh, Colorado as well, right? That What was that yes. like? Oh, yeah. For a great experience. I've never even been on the West Coast before in my life. I'm from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So it was a great experience. I just, I'm thankful to be a part of Team 93 to get the experience that. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Any uh, crazy elevation out there or anything? I know we asked who we were talking to Swanson about that. Remember when yeah. he came out, we were talking to Swanson if he was doing any of the uh, elevation mass or anything like that. Do you guys have to deal with any of that? Yeah, you could you could definitely feel a difference. Really? Yeah. Okay, I got you. I don't know now, if it was just about, me, but yeah. We talked about Bajan a little bit. Reigning Harlan Hill winner. He's a finalist again this year. He got sacked eight times in that semifinal game through two interceptions. They held him to 165 yards. That's the lowest in the last two years for him. I mean, he had to just been... How far was that from the normal Tyson Bajan that you've seen from the past, you know, the rest of the season? I didn't even know that. Like when we when we on defense, we so busy into the game and our game plan, we on the bench. So we don't get even, we don't really get to watch too much offense. But I I was hearing the uh the I was hearing what was going on from the crowd and stuff and watching the highlights, it was it was tough, man. It was it came ready to play, absolutely ready to play. 
hundred percent. I was about to ask you too, like you probably wouldn't have seen much of their defense. Like you said, you're kind of locked in on your guys' scheme and what your, you know, your play calling, all those type of things. But offensively, what did the ore diggers do? That was such a problem for you guys. And that, uh, you know, that was just, you know, downright hard to stop. Uh, honestly, they just nothing, nothing that was nothing that was too, nothing that was just out, outrageous. It was just, they just kept, they just kept coming. They just mm-hmm. kept coming. They was getting stronger as the game was going on. Like, I, yeah, like, I don't know how to explain it. They just kept, they was getting stronger. Yeah, I hear you now. I don't know. Um, I saw the final, but what was the flow of that game? Like, I know on the other side of the bracket, Ferris and West Florida, that game was tied up at 17 apiece at half. Then you look uh-huh. at the final score, 38-17, you would have no idea that it was a, it was a competitive one. But what was the flow of your guys' game like? Oh uh, yeah, it was it was ten to it was ten to three all the way until like the last minute when uh Tyson got uh I think it was a strip sack or uh, for a strip fumble. Okay. And then it was seventeen three after that. I and uh, uh going into halftime. So it was ten to three all the way until like the last minute of the second quarter. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, obviously no give up in that defense. You guys held opponents to under three yards of carry on the ground this year. You guys had eighteen picks on the back end, that defensive secondary. What the yeah. hell, man? <laughs> what are they feeding you guys? <laughs> Nothing, man. We just we just balled. Got a is lot of balls. Like, uh, is defense. that a schematic thing? Is that just a bunch of playmakers? A little bit of both? Uh, a lot of both. A lot of both. A lot of scheme, a lot of film watching, a lot of meetings. I love a that. Dude. That's gotta be just like an identity builder almost for you guys. What is that like? Yeah, we're gonna build on it for sure. Cause I, like I said, we got a lot of young guys. Like we're we're really young. Like you wouldn't even believe it. I love that, dude. Now, um, we had kind of talked about it. The energy in practice. I don't know how often you guys go ones-on-ones in practice or what that looks like, but when you guys do and you line it all up, I mean, with a team as talented as you guys are, I feel like the energy, like we had said, that's got to be crazy. How do you, uh, especially coming, again, coming in as a freshman, you're not one to back down from any challenge. How do you go and assert yourself in a situation like that? Oh, I ain't a lot going against, going against the guys on offense, especially Bajan and Joey. I yeah. love talking to those guys, like, just talking, <laughs> just talking. I love it. Like, it's like you just can't beat it because, like, on defense, like, we're about, like, like not saying, like, we're no-name guys, but, like, we're a bunch of no-name guys, really. Like, yeah. we don't have much. We don't have many accolades. Many people didn't know a lot of our names coming into this season. Like, we were damn near a brand-new defense. So, like, just talking to those guys, knowing that they got us, you know, it's just a lot of competitiveness. I love – I go on girl period is like no, no other. I love that, dude. Almost like just prove it every single day, right? Every every prove day. It. Yeah. Got something from Joe? Yeah. <clears throat> just a quick question for you. Uh, just an off season thing. Like, what's the number one thing you're gonna focus on this off season to make yourself a better football player? Getting stronger and faster. I feel like I feel like honestly, honestly speaking, I don't know if I should say this, but I really don't care. I haven't been in the weight room like <laughs> ever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like getting so stronger and faster. Hey. It's one thing to do. It's another thing to acknowledge it, right? You know, you got to get back in there. All right. That's not bad, but good question, Jim. Now I want to talk about uh, Coach McCook, AFCA Regional Coach of the Year. What has it been like playing for him? And, uh, you know, why is he why is he bringing home those awards, I guess, to say it plainly? That's the man. That's that's one of the, one of the best coaches ever. Like, I love Coach McCook. Even though, like, sometimes you can't really read him. Sometimes you don't know <laughs> what he really thinking. <laughs> but, like. He gonna he gonna let you know like he gonna let you know right from wrong he gonna let you know everything like that's that's my guy I love Coach McCook it's a, it's been a pleasure playing for him actually I'm not gonna lie like he he looked out for me in many ways many ways that's good to hear man Ty got anything for him or no bro I was looking you microphone up microphone there you go uh, my bad bro <laughs> I was looking you up a little bit and I saw you was from uh, DC I don't know how far yeah. West Virginia is from DC but like how is that transition because I know like for me. I'm from the Chicago area, and now I'm in uh-huh. the middle of nowhere. Like, how hard was that transition, especially being a young guy? Oh, it was – oh, oh, it was it was terrible. I ain't going to lie, because I'm from D- – you know, I'm from D.C., so that's like city fast, you know what I'm saying? But when I went to West Virginia, it was like a bunch of woods and mountains and deers and, and, and nothing going – like, it was like nothing 15 minutes close, like not even a Walmart. I was like, that's yo, I'm that's trying to get that's the out of here. <laughs> you get out here, it's nothing but woods, a big, big dumbass lake. It's a couple stores, downtown, two minute walk from one end of downtown to the next. There's nothing out here. That's how it is. It's Chevestel, man. I was like, what the hell? I'm trying to get out of here. 
Oh, but that's a testament to uh, the football program, right? Like they get to get type of guys you in there and to keep you guys there. I mean, how do you pitch that to guys like you that might come from those more urban uh, situations to try and get them come play with you guys? It's, it's especially especially being D two like. I don't want like not talk like I love absolutely love Sheffield, but not having the facilities of the other schools like the the just the the uh, the, the social life is like you gotta really love football. You gotta really want to yeah. just go there to be great and win. You gotta really have a focus. It's like a mindset thing. Is you gotta that really you knew know was gonna be kind of a challenge heading into that. I had to imagine so. Absolutely, I talked to my father about it a lot. Like I, I it was a child. Like I was like I don't know. It was different. Yeah, just going on my visit. On the back end of that, area. are you glad that uh, on the decision, you glad you went there? And obviously, you guys are winning a ton of games. That got, that's got to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Love to hear that, dude. Well, fellas, if you don't have anything else for him, Dante, appreciate you, man. I told you we'd keep it quick tonight, but uh, can't thank you enough for coming on here. It's just good to have some uh, – we talked to a lot of GLIAC guys, a lot of, like, Midwest yes, and Eastern uh-huh. guys. It's good to get a little more uh, representation, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. having me, for sure. Of course, brother. Hey, we'll be in touch. Like I said, appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I would love to come back anytime, anytime. Of course, man. Have a good one. We'll see you. Yeah, see yeah right, sir. Bro. You too. Appreciate it again. Good little interview with Dante. Appreciate him. Seriously, do. And like I said, it's good to get more representation around uh, the different conferences. That was our first PSAC player, coach, affiliate, whatever on the podcast. So that was good. I think we need more of that. We've hit GLIAC for sure. Uh, GLVC, GMAC, PSAC. We're missing Gulf South. I think, and a couple other different spots. So um, we'll have to get on that, fellas. I think it's good. It's just good to hear from all over the place. This is the point of the podcast, right? Oh, yeah. Love it. Oh, so for sure, for sure. let's talk about uh, the D2 championship. Ferris is back. They took down West Florida, 38-17. Like we talked about it with Dante a little bit. That game was tied 17-17 at the half. Could have been anyone's game. And Ferris came out and just ran away with it. Caleb Murphy had a pretty big game, forced a huge fumble. And uh, had a couple other big plays. So just the typical stat line we've seen from him. But uh, they're going to take on Colorado School of Mines in the national championship. Sweet little graphic by NCAA D2. Yeah. Whoever's doing the graphics, shout out. That's Dude, like, that's, it's pretty polished. That's, that's, that's they way better than like whoever do it for NMU. That's like, like, it don't get no better than that. You know what's funny is I actually don't do the graphics anymore. So now you're dissing my boy. And now I'm gonna take offense. Damn. Tell him get his game. Tell him get it together. Because <laughs> we ain't got nothing hard as that. That shit hard. It is. Tell it? him get it together. That is pretty. I'm. I'm actually. I'm really impressed. That's pretty sweet. So, uh, number one seed Ferris football versus number two Mines football. Now they do uh, reseed after the quarterfinal round. So that'd be why it's the one versus the two. Um, I don't believe. I know Mines was a one seed coming in, but Ferris was a four seed. It was a four seed. Yeah, I think you're right. So, uh, that'll be a pretty big one now. What do we think? We were talking to Dante a little bit before we started recording. He says that that mind school is a jet. He thinks they might take it all. What do we say to that? Dogs. No. Nah. Dogs. Yeah, dogs. I, I watched the game. Like, I was watching, like. Which one? I watched both the games. You did? Yeah. I, I couldn't do this. ESPN Plus. I don't have ESPN Plus. Get a fire stick, man. Jailbreak it. I'm illegally <laughs> pirating every game that's ever been played. I illegally pirate NFL Red Zone. In the NBA Finals stop. game. Any, <laughs> stop there. You, you got to gotta blur it out like, eh, as soon as I say I got a fire and I stick. I won't because I won't remember to. But, um, no, like, mine's, like you say, it was it was a close game until they the, got a strip sack. The or, line yeah. just couldn't block, like, at all. For they Shepard? had six sacks in the first half. Did they really? Yes. They gave Holy up six shit. sacks in the first half. In the last one in the first half. Or it wasn't the last one because they got another one the next drive. <laughs> but they hit them, the ball come out, they scoop it and score it. So now it's 17 to 3 at yeah. that time. And it started to run away. After that, they got to doing anything they wanted. I didn't think mine was that good. I did, but not really. Though. Not like there yeah. was a lot of fluky shit going on. Yeah. A lot of. Well, we saw them play Grand Valley in the season opener, and Grand Valley took them down by one. Now that was at Grand Valley, I believe. Yes, because that was at Grand Valley. Then Grand Valley actually made the trip out to play uh, CSU Pueblo. So they had two Colorado mm-hmm. teams back to back, but the first one was at home. So yeah. Mines came in and gave the number one team in the country uh, a really big fight. So that was uh, that was pretty sweet to see. So it'll be really interesting to see how these two compare. And I had said before when we talked about Ferris when they were going to play Grand Valley that if Ferris didn't get out to a lead early or if they had to claw their way out of like a two or three score game, I thought they were in trouble. What they do? They go block a punt. They win. You know, they they get out ahead of that one. Even when they were behind by one score, they were always in that game. And then all it takes is for one Grand Valley slip up. They had a couple of interceptions. Uh, play a rebounce goes here or there, and end of the game, Ferris is up. 
and you're like, how how do we get here? That's kind of how it felt for me, but that's just what Ferris is. Like, they just make those plays. Um, and that guy in the graphic, Malik Mitchell, he's been a big part of that. Uh, the quarterback play from him and Golker, Carlson Golker, can't discredit him. I believe he has 26 rushing touchdowns on the season right now. 28 now? Good luck. I can't even keep up. That's, really, I, that's I impressive. Every time he get inside the three-yard line, you yeah. know where it's going. It's a redshirt freshman. It don't matter how old you is. If you if you if can, you big and you got a nose for something, <laughs> we're going to put you in there. Oh, yeah, and they're, they figured that out. So... Um, really excited to uh, to check out that game here as we as we get going. But uh, we can stay on Division Two, fellas, and talk about the AFCA All American teams that were just recently announced. And like we talked about when we were previewing them, a good bit of GLIAC talent on these fellas. So we'll take a look at the defensive side of the ball first. And there he is. I think we expected all of us kind of expected that one, but I Caleb mean, Murphy yeah. uh, being featured on that one from Ferris State. Also, we've got Nick Whiteside, DB from Saginaw Valley. This is his second year in a row, I believe, being on the All America team. And I will say too, like those Ferris jerseys, that might that's got to be one of the cleaner jerseys in our league. The blacks with the red helmets. Yeah, are we in agreement those, there? Those are nice jerseys. I really like those. those nice jerseys. Can't go wrong with black and red. You're right. But hey. it's it's you're right. It's it's kind of a hard one to mess up. But at the same time, like they certainly don't mess it up. No, not at all. They make that shit look good. Yeah, it does look good. Now uh, we'll get some respect to the other guys on this list here. Uh, let's see, we got a guy from let's see, let's boy. I'm trying to think of like what different leagues we've got here. Some Northern Sun, Northern State. There's a guy from Pueblo, Ashland, Angelo State. A lot of like contenders. Ashland had a solid year. Angelo State, obviously two seed going into the playoffs. Um, but also a lot of these guys from teams that really didn't make. Runs Western Oregon, Jalen Parnell from Western Oregon. I did not know that was a Division II school. Shame on me. You guys ever heard of that one? No. No. So he must be a dog to make this team out of there. Good for him. Uh, but that is the D2 All-America first team defense. We can switch over. Oh, also worth mentioning, our guy Abe Swanson, second team All-America. Don't have the graphic here, but uh, shout out to Abe because hey, that's still Abe. still a great award. Hell still yeah. a really good award for hey, uh, for the guy Abe. You know he's from St. Charles East? I didn't even know that before uh, he came on the pod. He's from like right, right around the uh, Chicago area. I didn't know that. Neither did I, for the record. Um, but now, check yeah. out the uh, D2 All-America first team offense and poster child for this one, Tyson Bajant, the quarterback from Shepard. We've talked about a lot about him today. And... Uh, only Gleak representation on here. You look down, that'd be Quentin Barrow from Grand, uh, Grand Valley State. Just got the follow from Quentin on uh, Twitter, actually. So maybe we can we can get him on the horn, get him on here for an episode soon. Yeah, he's big time. It. We'd like to do that. We'd like to do that, Quentin. If you're listening, Quentin, come on on, come on on the show. Otherwise, other representation here. Uh, Ochita Baptist. They were the one seed going to the playoffs. I was a rep- representation on there. Pittsburgh State School of Mines, Duluth, uh, Northern Sun. So. Uh, all across the board here, and I do at least appreciate that. Like, uh, doesn't seem to be a ton of bias uh, as far as like different leagues or just like certain uh, conferences. They really do spread it out, so I would assume that means they really try to evaluate everyone. I would like to see the process of how they actually go through and evaluate who's in charge yeah. of this. I don't. Me too. No, I'm not. Yeah, and I want to see if they watch like the film of the games or just look at the numbers. Yeah, you know what I mean. I would assume so, it's got to be a combination of both because yeah. I obviously can't watch every single snap. It of can't every play. be. It, it, it's, it's a coach's uh, association, so exactly. Yeah. Like, so yeah, obviously, like coaches see stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not just like press writers. You know what I mean? Yep. That's a good point. Yeah. AFCA. I mean, it's right there. American Football Coaches Association. So I would like to know more about their evaluation process, but uh, that is on me. I will have to uh, I'll have to do a little bit more about that. Um, second team for the for All-America offense, Adam Seeler from Ferris was on the second team for that. So also worth noting, he was at the uh, GLIAC Media Day. I don't know if you guys tuned into that and watched that, but he was the, he's got an older brother that plays in the NFL. So uh, shout out to him as well. He'll be playing for national championship this weekend. But fellas, let's go on to uh, NFL or college football first. NFL, huh? I got snubbed. <laughs> that's that's what you wanted to get in there? 1,400. And I was like, man, I ain't going to take it there. I ain't going to make it about me. But I got to get 2,200 now. Yeah. If that's what it got to be. I didn't look hey, at this. I didn't look at the stat line for the running back on the first or second team. I would want to see, like, you know how they're obviously – I'm a big fantasy football fan. Like, I want to see, like, the fantasy rankings of, like, each of the players, how many points they would have gotten and everything like that. You know what I mean? Rank them in a little bit of a different way. If you're looking at PPR numbers, like, Tyshawn's got to be, like, top three or five running back in Division II fantasy football. Yeah, 100%. Because you have, what, like, 500 and, like, 900 or something? Like, 500 receiving? 445, 989. Yeah, I was going to say, like, 
That's longest that, rushing that's touchdown a, that's in the conference, that's, longest that's, receiving touchdown in the conference. I was like sixth in receptions. That's an RB one top PPR fifteen. Back. There's some dogs out receiving there receiving yards as a running back. I was the Gleak rushing champ. I mean, hey, next year, fuel, bro. right? Next year. Fuel. You got another, you got year. another year, dude. Need it. I'm finna cut up. Go for it. Let's change the topic before I get to doing push-ups in this one. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about the brand new Lions. The Lions have won five of the last six. They're making a legitimate case for the wild card spot. In front of them, you've got the Giants, the Commanders, and the Seahawks. And just looking at that picture right there, the first thing I want to talk about, the Seahawks, their next two games. Versus the 49ers in Kansas City against the Chiefs. The next two stops for the Seahawks. They would be lucky to take one. They would be like lucky beyond their wildest dreams to take one game out of those two. Coming off this last week against the Detroit Lions. Carol, coming off this last No, we're talking about the Seahawks no, Seattle, right now. Seattle's Seahawks playing right the now. Niners and then And then they go to Kansas the, City the to Chiefs play the Chiefs. The so like, That's two losses. Yeah. Yes. They're, and I'm saying they are they are one of the teams ahead of the Lions right now. Uh yeah, they they won't make the playoffs. They they could not afford to lose to Car- the Carolina Panthers. That's that was a very and big they, loss they for them. They did. And they, I ain't, I don't know, I ain't going to say that cuz one day Brock Petty may wake up and be terrible, cause they they not, now they got to play without Debo Samuel, and you don't know what that means. I mean McCaffrey, McCaffrey still got Matt, McCaffrey, Ayuk, and Kittle. Like that's still like a no, Kittle a glorified offense. tackle. <laughs> they barely throw him the ball. He is she the they call forward. him the best blocking tight end in the league. They don't throw him the ball. He'd be the yeah. best tight end period if they throw him the ball. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know, bro. There's too many people going down for the 49ers. Like if if the game get muddy. Say the defense have an off day. Do you believe in Brock Brady to win you a game? You know, That's the thing is, know. people are saying, pretty you know, good, dude. hopefully this defense doesn't you're have an off day. Because you're right. I mean, if because he had 185 happen, passing yards in the first. Yeah, half. and we'll talk about we'll talk about him in a second. And he have a, we he gotta have a, a yard in the well, second. Dude, they're winning like 35 zero. We got a sec. We got a second whole segment for them. So don't worry. We'll get all of our Niners talking. Well, but to stay on the uh, to stay on the Lions topic here, just quickly, we talked about in the intro. Dan Campbell, Penay said that. Dude's just got some. He's got some nuts on him. That's literally what he said in the post game. Um, no, he just crazy. He that was word for word. Did you watch it? I, no, I ain't watch it, but I believe that's what yeah. he said. But no, nah, folks is just crazy. <laughs> the, fake, the fake punt was insane. Like, they was. had no business running that. <laughs> no, on their own twenty six yard line. Like they had the fake like, punt, and if there, the returner wasn't there to make the play, he was gone. And if yeah. folks didn't get that first down, Dan Campbell would be applying for our head coaching job <laughs> at Northern. <laughs> Because he'd have been he'd have been, he'd have been done for sure. Yeah. But we can take a look at uh, this tweet from PFF on Panay So I want to talk about him. The former first-round draft pick. He had a great game, but his biggest play was this in the flat in the fourth quarter to seal the game, really, on this first down. Look at that shot. Not a whole lot of airtime, right? The vert, yeah. not spectacular to him. I'm sure he's got – he might want that one back as far yeah. as the jumping capabilities. But good, good soft hands, turns around, locates the ball, sees it in. 148 blo- uh, pass blocking snaps in the last four games, not a single sack allowed. And of course, one first down reception. And you were talking about earlier, they're starting to make that argument him over Chase. What do you, th- what do you think about it right now, sitting at where we're at? I would personally, using the God given common sense that the Lord gave me, I would still take Jamar Chase. I'm going to say, I don't think you can go wrong with either pick. But right? Sewell, no, they're both, Sewell they're is an both animal. Great picks. Yeah. And now that you can see he's a receiving threat, I mean, throw, him a, picture, yeah. throw him a couple picture. Throw him a couple tackle screens, you know, maybe put him in the backfield, let him get a little carry. I will say, this is not the first time they've actually had Sewell split out there. So that was part of the reason I think the Vikings didn't immediately key in on that. They like to split him out there and get a little uh, outside, whether it be like mm. a tunnel screen or mm. just like a little swing pass, whatever, and get him out there blocking on a secondary. I mean, they don't stand a chance. The guy's so athletic, if you get your hands on him, they're done yeah. for. But take a look at this picture, fellas, and uh, that is a receiving threat. I will say, more airtime on this than the actual catch that we just watched. No, yeah. But full yeah, extension. He was, like, he was like that for a while. He was, I didn't think he was going to ever come down. Full extension from the big fella here. I will say, that was I awesome. like, the Lions got, like, top three jerseys in the league. You know what? I'm going to agree with that. And especially these these combos. The Them Honolulu hard. Blue Maybe I are can't say so that. nice. Them things hard. No, you can say that. Them bitches, Them bitches hard. hard. Look at those. Bro, he got that shit on, too. He got that shit on. For a right tackle? He got that shit on. Come on. I um, like that fat Back dude. to back. Back to back weeks for them wearing the blue on blue, actually. So, I don't know if this is just a, we just keep this thing going. 
do we just keep these jerseys going? I don't see why not. Uh, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's, it's a, it's a home. It. Yeah, yeah, if it's just a home only thing, I'm not really I'm sure. I'm watching the game, and it's like it's like the whole crowd had on blue. It's like everybody just knew it was like a college game. Exactly, dude. And I'm that, like, that, damn, that should look hard. I want to be at a Lions game right now so bad. Hey. I really do. And then another part of that play, like as I was like, as I was watching this play unfold, right? So he was, he came in motion. I'm like, oh, he's pulling. They're gonna run power. It was like, like a wham and block. The, and yeah. then boom, he's out running the pass. So it's like, you're, as a, as a <laughs> defensive coordinator, as a defensive coordinator. You're never gonna game plan for a lineman to go in motion and catch a pass. <laughs> like that's just great scheme for the Lions. Yeah, like, and if you a, do, you are paranoid. Yeah, that are psychic or like, both. Because every time it's natural common sense in football to just see when lineman come. It's yeah, you, and you watch the defensive yeah, end on the actual block. play. Yeah, and he's preparing for a hit. Yeah, right, he's preparing for a blow, nope. and then nothing, nothing he comes, right and he's off there's balance. There's no one there. There's nobody there. It was beautiful. Yeah. And then, honestly, yeah. it could have been the best part of the play. He dives, right? Wasn't touched. And you see the two Vikings defenders waiting there, like, get up, yeah. get up. Yeah. And then he tries to, like, get the ball from him. Pinay just smacks him yeah. upside the head. <laughs> I love that, dude. Uh, I was I seeing, love like, that. that play, like, before I realized he was going to run for the pass, was, like, reminded me of the NFC Championship game when Trent Williams was pulling. I'm like, oh, they're taking, dude. This, they're taking this play from the 49ers. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no. These you know, that's actually not a bad comparison in the way that they move. Now, Panay, not on the level. No, 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 no. Yeah. I was just saying. I know, like, I know you're not making yeah. that argument. I'm yeah. just clarifying. But, like, <laughs> I like that comparison, though. And if you can even be talked about in a similar fashion as that guy, yeah. you're doing something right yeah. because he is a force of nature. You know what, athleticism or playing the – no, just like they, they both like went in motion. Like I'm, yeah, I'm talking more more on the athleticism piece. No, Penny Soul is very athletic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Trent know. Trent Williams he is. is he's probably more athletic than Trent Williams, considering also, Trent Williams smaller. is like 36. Yeah, yeah, but also he's a good deal smaller than Trent Williams, I believe. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, he's listed at six look. five on the roster. Yeah. Panay is. He's he don't look six five. five to me. He's like six three. Six yeah, two. that's what I thought. So but, those are those are my thoughts exactly. For sure. Um. Well, good. I'm glad we're on the same page. But finally, fellas, we can get on to uh, we can get on to Mr. Relevant, and I keep calling him that because it's just such a funny. I love it. I love You're it. Calling so much. him Mr. Relevant now. That's what I just said. Oh, I think, yeah, okay. my bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> he ain't like me, bro. He ain't it sounds him. like relevant. Sounds like relevant. You say it fast. It's hard. Yeah, the, yeah. the eyes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're good. You're good. But Mr. Relevant, staying relevant. Huge 35-7 win over the Bucks. And um, something we talked about a couple times, Ty, and I think you had brought this up in the beginning. We talked about Mike White initially, right? And I had that overreaction of, like, is he the face of the blah, 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 blah. And you said, well, let's see him do it against a good defense. And you kind of had the same reaction against Brock Purdy. The Bucks' defense, although not maybe the same as they have been in the past, still a pretty formidable defense. What did you What did you see from him? No, it ain't that good no more. The Bucks, you're talking about. Yeah, no, okay. their they, they defense is not that good anymore. But that was, a, like, that team, though. Because it's like an aura around the Bucks. They're the Buccaneers. They got Tom Brady. So you know it's and never going to be. And they still have pieces defensively. It's never like, going to be. Yeah, they, yeah. Got, they got pieces. Like, collectively as a defense, though, they're not what they used to be. Okay, that's but fair. But they did come out. They came out and got on top of them early, though. And yeah, and his stat line, I mean, 16 for 21, 185 yards, two touchdowns passing, one rushing. And like you said, he didn't do anything in the second half. This is basically a first-half stat line. I just want to see him. I just want to see him in a in a tough game. Because it's hard for me to Agreed. be like. Agreed. It's hard for me to be like, yeah, because. To be quite frank, the Buccaneers aren't a good football team this year. They're not playing like a good football team. So yeah. it's like, it's Tom Brady, so of course it's going to be like, man. And Brady. we say that, I believe, are they still in, in on top of the NFC South? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're going to they're win the division, too. Yeah. And it's insane, yeah. but you're right. I mean, that they the are. The division's terrible, so. Yeah. They're yeah. going to play, they're going to end up playing Dallas in that first round in Tampa. And dude, that, I'd. I'm not like feeling great as a Cowboys fan going to play Tom Brady on the road. It's the playoffs. Like anything, like the playoffs don't care how you got there as yeah. long as you're there. I literally, anything I ain't gonna lie, the Buccaneers are not a good football team. No, but, I, and but if I'm I the would, Cowboys, like, I, I, I definitely want to play the Buccaneers. Okay, but that's that's kind of more a than the Commanders. Draw. That's kind of a shitty first really? time draw. I think I wouldn't. Way. I wouldn't want to play the Commanders right now. I wouldn't. Or, or the Lions. I wouldn't want to play. Yeah. I, I, I was. Yeah. I, I've been a big Lions hater, but them niggas balling. So I'm. A, I'm gonna show respect. It's just. It's all about. Who gets hot at the right time, right? And the mm -hmm. Lions are hot right now, but the question now is, can they maintain this level of play, right? Is there going to be a drop-off somewhere? Are they going to come up short in one of these big-time games? I mean, we're a fake punt away sometimes from not getting the first down or whatever. The Eagles, the one seed, they 10-1. Yeah. and one. The Cowboys got they're three like losses. 12-1. and one. They got three losses? Yeah, say it's not 10-1. Yeah, yeah the, so we're week. This is going to be week, uh, week 15, 15 coming yeah. up. Yeah. The Cowboys lost to – they got three losses or two losses? Cowboys are 10-3. and three. So they ten and three. They need. I thought we just said this is week fifteen. Oh, bye. They need. They need the Eagles to lose three out of the next four games. 
So we can say that the Eagles have locked up the one seed, especially just with about the Vikings losing how they just did. Yep. Vikings the one seed, or my bad, Eagles the one seed. Yep. Minnesota the two seed. Uh, San Fran the three seed. San Fran, San Fran might end up being. The I would say they could definitely make a run at that. The I Vikings, believe. the Vikings do not look good. Like they the, look. Like, what's and it called? There could be recency bad. bias as well. What's it called? Yeah. All right. So either either, either way, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is going to be the four seed, and the Cowboys are going to yeah, be the five like seed. Like that's it's wraps basically. Yeah. So yeah, I would agree. Um, and staying on the on the Purdy train. Uh, he becomes the first quarterback to beat Brady in his first start. I mean, I, kind of I a, saw that. Kind of I an obscure that. stat, but still a, a pretty cool one. Imagine and, uh, just to come out in your first so start. Another that kind of tidbit about the whole Brady thing. So, Brock Purdy's parents, obviously, going into the season, like, okay, these kids, he's not going to play. Oh, yeah, watch his the, dad. He's the, he's the third string quarterback, right? They bought tickets to the game against Brady because he's Tom Brady. Really? It, happened, it just happened to be his first start. That's like, so he did it before the season. Yeah. Before the season started, I didn't know. I did not know that. Yeah, I, I did saw, see I his saw dad, a little segment before like the game or whatever. I did see his dad's reaction on Twitter, and it was super special. Yeah. It was really cool. I don't know if you saw yeah. that, but like like you said, they're planning on their kid being a practice squad guy all year behind yeah. Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. Like yeah. I don't, I, you can't write it up better no, than that, can't. dude. You, you can't, can't write it up better for the kid. So, no. Tom Brady, uh, let's stick on him. I mean, he might have finally started to to decline, but maybe that we shouldn't overreact. Like I said, the recency bias is is definitely real. Uh, that 49ers defense. Is that good? And we yes. saw them pick him apart. Um, yeah. Is it overreacting to say that the time has caught up to him, or he still got more football left in him? Who Brady? Yeah, Brady was cooked when he came back. You he shouldn't have came back. It's, it's somewhere it's, on the files. Go find it. I say his ass tripping. <laughs> you need to just go and sit down because that was that was Peyton Manning. Right? That was as close. Rock. That was as close as he was gonna get. He lost to the Rams. I'm like, man, that's as close as he's gonna get. Like he should have just shut it down. I'm like, he's never gonna get back to the Super Bowl. The nigga Jimmy talking about, did you see the spar that he threw? It's over with, man. I knew it. And he ain't going to retire after this year. Because his pride. Cause he has no, he has no money. His he has pride no money. is so why. hurt. He has no money? Dude, he invested like a ton of money into FTX. So he has he has money. But Oh, yeah, and they went like, under. They lost, went under, didn't they? He lost like $300 million, dude. Are you serious? Yeah. That's Tom Brady. Tom Brady probably got LeBron James money. Well, he's also married to a billionaire, too. So that helped me. It was, yeah, it was help. just Zell's money, help. too. It was just Zell's money, too. But like. His pride is so hurt, he's not gonna retire. He gonna who, what team? What team he gonna try to go to? Who Brady? Yeah, he ain't going back to Tampa Bay. They got shit show now. You think he's moving? It's because of Bruce Arians left, dude. Bruce Arians is like Todd Bowles is not a good head coach. Damn, like, where is. Brady gonna go? Vegas? I don't know where Brady's gonna go, but this clip was pretty. I don't know. It was interesting to me. Um, Dre Greenlaw he picked off Brady in that game against the Forty ers after the game, post game, you mean against the Bucks? Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm totally flipped up on teams. He plays for the Niners. Picked off Brady on the Bucks. Hello. And uh, anyways, post game, you get this interaction from Greenlaw and Brady, and he takes the ball that he picked off and takes it to him so that he can get it signed. And I just thought that was a pretty interesting interaction. <laughs> Imagine yeah, that, Brady. Brady's like, right? what the fuck? Yeah, yeah he's like, this guy, <laughs> like, he really just intercepted my ball. Uh, and now you're gonna and it looks like you know I was obviously you I mean, know, there's he, respect there he yeah. did and he came up and yeah. said like you know you're the greatest uh, greatest to ever do it like I, you know it's huge yeah. respect blah 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 and you know he was very cordial and and, and nice about it but still I just thought that interaction yeah. was so interesting right for yeah. me as like and that was the question I wanted to ask you guys is if you're the quarterback are you like I mean obviously we're not Tom Brady but are you okay with doing this so look I'm finna I'm finna I'm finna spin it like this he got two balls. How we know that's the ball, you feel me, that he intercepted for sure? He got two balls. There's two of them that he oh, just got signed. And one in his hand, and he just gave him the other one. How we know that's the ball he intercepted? How we just don't know he just went and got some balls signed? Well, I mean. Wait a minute. Yeah, he did get two signed. I think, Hold I think on. He just, he probably, Hold on. He probably just wants to have a ball signed by Tom Brady also at the same time. It's like. Yeah, but if you got one, you picked way. off. Isn't that way no, cooler? Yeah, but. That's what I'm saying. Like we, It's easy for us yeah. to be like. Yeah, he got the ball that he intercepted. Son, by Tom, I don't need his signature. Nigga, I picked off Tom Brady. And <laughs> That's it's enough. Gonna, it's going to be enough. on the internet forever. I don't yeah. need him to sign that. He probably just getting some ball signed because he's a Tom Brady fan. Yeah. Potentially, but that was the that was the supposed story. You so, know how yeah. Adam Schefter going to spin it. Yeah, he can spin it however the hell he wants to spin it. I'm not going to believe it. See, you believed him. You believed him. That ain't Schefter. That ain't Schefter. Um, he run Bleacher Report. I'll say this, too. No, he does not. I'll say this. Is this only 
I wouldn't say acceptable, but only like really happening because this is the GOAT. I feel like with any other quarterback, no. you probably don't see Dude, this happen, right? There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. No and one's like, coming up to uh, Jared Goff after the game. No. Jared. No. Dude. Are y'all crazy? <laughs> hey, I will say this, though. I will, did y'all hey. not watch the Jets play the Ravens like the year Lamar Jackson won the Super Bowl? And he gave, Lamar Jackson gave out like five jerseys. Did he really? After he just beat the shit out the Jets. <laughs> you said the year he won the Super Bowl. I was saying the Super year he won Bowl. MVP. I mean, that's what I was, I was confused. The year like, he won MVP. That year. It was like Monday Night Football. He beat the the, the shit out the Jets. <laughs> you got like five players. Like, yeah, I need it. Like, they bringing out extra Lamar Jackson jerseys. I've never that's seen pretty, that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's pretty yeah. awesome. Good for it. It's like yeah. it's got to be the most utmost form of respect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're an NFL guy, like to have multiple dudes that you just like you said beat the shit out of. Man, hey, big bro, let me get that jersey. <laughs> let me get that jersey. I ain't going to say what it is. <laughs> but just know. People, if you listening, you know what it is. Yeah, we, I, oh, uh, dog. And it's extreme. That's like, yeah, like, that, time, like, that's time. crazy. Yeah. Big time. That's big crazy. Time. Especially, big time. If, especially if they just, like, killed you. It's like, what? Like, bro, what you doing? Like, it's different because they just beat the shit out of Brady. It, yeah. But imagine if Brady had just drugged their ass. <laughs> Tom, can you sign this ball for me? Where's your, where's your where's dignity? Your pride. What? Oh, that's good. This is the other video that I wanted to watch. And I'm trying to decide to, to myself here whether this one has any backing to it. The supposed story behind it is this kid got on the field and took Tom Brady's water bottle and, like, took a swig of it. To me, it screams absolutely fake. But um, we can at least get your guys' take on it. You'll see him here. He says, swipe Tom Brady's water bottle. That Brady juice tastes horrible. That Brady juice? No. It's just an odd, it's just an odd video. I like don't, just an I don't, odd video. I don't buy it at all. Mm-hmm. Cause like, like he just put TB12 on that thing. You feel me? Like that's, he is on, he's on the field. Like he's on the field. He's on the field. But anybody, I could, I'll go upstairs and grab a water bottle. It put KM40. <laughs> this is Kobe's magic stuff. <laughs> This is so disgusting. He probably drinking regular water. That's what I'm saying. So what also like or when you watch water. this, when you watch yeah. So you watch this video, you're like water, Gatorade, or some type of electrolyte mix. Those are potentially the only three yeah. things that would be in that water bottle. None of which would provoke this type of reaction, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, he went viral. He got what he's looking for. So. He did. I mean, we're reacting to it. That's I just exactly. thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> and I, like, th- I think it's just capped though. Oh, 100 percent Like it's no, like it's no. It's he no just way. keeps getting more views and more views and more views on it. Hell yeah. So Swipe hey, Tom winning, Brady's winning. water bottle. How you do that? <laughs> How you do that? <laughs> How the whole Bucks equipment staff walk off without the greatest <laughs> football player of all time his water that he specifically wants for him to put TB12 on that bitch. Yeah. Oh, we forgot the, we forgot the bottle. Tom. There's a one key piece missing here though is this pregame or post. The stands are totally like empty. We don't really know. It looks it's like a little, bit, a little bit later. It's post game game. Look at the sky. Yeah, it does look does look later. So yeah, that's post game. And you think he just left the water bottle out there, huh? You go buy one of them at, at, at Dunham's right now, and I'm going to write TB12. <laughs> huh. Flew to California, yeah, stole yeah, Brady's hey, water hey, bottle. Shout out to Dunham's kids over there. Yeah, it's shout working. out. Working the late shift tonight. Yeah, yeah. Working the late oh, shift. That, oh, that shift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he he acts like he's working in like a coal mine, dude. <laughs> Yeah, he acts like he like walks to work five miles through the snow and like, like how your parents said they got to school oh, when they were dude, little. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. Um, but <laughs> I guess we can uh, we can finish off our our NFL side of things. We got another good video to react to, and this is the SoFi Stadium AR fan cam. Do you guys have any guesses as to what this could potentially be? AR is augmented reality. Thank you, Ty. That's you're spot on. What do you think? I don't know what it could be, though. What they turn them into no the clue? people so, from Avatar? Yeah, so here it is. This is featured in <laughs> SoFi Stadium. And to me, it's almost like what? putting a Snapchat filter yeah, on somebody. Yeah, yep, I, yep. I was right? thinking that, too. So yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. same technology, you can see it kind of snap on and off these people. But pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. Pretty yeah. impressive stuff from the AR yeah. fan cam. Oh, that was pretty sweet. So then the question is, yeah, we can take another look at that. those guys. They're messing around with it. Super sweet. They can do that in real time, though. Yeah. We, we, Very cool. We've, we've gone from like the flex cam to the kiss cam to now the augmented reality cam. I was to say, yeah. is this the next wave of coming across the yeah. country? Whatever. I'm assuming yeah. a lot of these cameras have the technology to be able to do this. I mean, if we yeah. can do it on our phones, it's I gonna be yeah. It's gonna be like 
when the, when the next Avengers movie come out. Uh-huh. I was going to say, especially for Avenger. promotional pieces, yeah, you that, can that's use what, something like this. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, 100%. For sure. So now I would I was going to ask, we talked about it right there a little bit, but what uh, what do we want to see from the AR fan cam? What kind of possibilities could we could we get with this type of stuff? Besides like the obvious promotional and marketing stuff, I feel like there are some... You can have some funny opportunities. Like, there's the one on TikTok I know where it looks like the dude's like creeping over the person's shoulder. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Those, I think that would some stuff like yeah. that would be pretty funny. You get someone to like I think that's a liability in these uh super so? super big stadiums. Like somebody you, liable to jump from the nosebleed yeah, exactly. because he thinks somebody behind <laughs> oh, him. Oh my god. Okay, I wasn't thinking that extreme. I'm thinking like someone comes over their shoulder and like popcorn gets thrown up in the air or like soda gets dumped <laughs> or something like that. But. I guess we could have people. Fan oh, falls yeah. six yeah. stories. I was sick. the Chicago Bears for seven billion over the <laughs> AR fan cam. <laughs> Not a Bears that sold the team to him. <laughs> the, ba- hey, that, the Bears need to sell the team, though. They really do. So do the Lions if we're on that topic. Um, but yeah, that was the uh, that's the AR fan cam, fellas. So I wanted to I wanted to finish on that. I saw that on uh, I saw that on Twitter. And I thought that was pretty funny. And I think, like you said, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of the whether they call it the AR fan cam. Maybe they could work on a little bit of a better name. Doesn't really AR roll off. Cam. Doesn't really roll up. Roll AR off the fan cam. It's not bad, um, but we can talk. We'll talk introducing some, uh, the AR fan cam. You say it like that. Yeah. Well, anything works with that voice. Yeah, know. it does. It yeah. does. Um, but we'll move on to college football. Caleb Williams wins the Heisman. USC yes. now has the most Heisman winners with eight, even though they probably will only recognize seven still in their stadium. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, breaking a four-way tie. Fellows, who were the other three teams in that tie? There were four teams that were tied with seven Heisman winners. Who were the other three outside of University of South Alabama? California? Alabama is not one of I was going to say, them. no, Alabama not one of them. Nope. Mark Ingram was like the very first Alabama yeah. Heisman winner. Is, was he really? Yeah. Is like, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is one. Um, um, Notre Dame? Is Notre, Notre Dame? Dame is two. I'd have said Notre Dame is, is there like a weird like Ivy League school like Harvard or like Yale or something? Because nope. they've been like there around for not. a yeah, yeah, no. Is there it Ohio not, State? Though. It is Ohio, Ohio State. State. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I, I, I'd have went three for three. On God, I'd have went three for three. <laughs> yeah. I, knew Bama, I knew Bama was the first. That was their first Heisman because Mark yeah. Ingram won it over Tim Tebow and I was sick as hell. Yeah, I just think recency too. When you talk about the streak, you would just of, think, uh, you know, Oklahoma especially being the most obvious yeah. one. You have Baker, row, yeah. yeah, exactly. You, you know, you go through the Baker, Kyler, uh, Jalen, or all all of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, Caleb Williams was at Oklahoma too. He was. That's the craziest part. That's insane. As you think about it, if he could, yeah. if he would have stuck around or whatever. But obviously, he follows his coach Lincoln Riley to yeah. uh, to USC, and um, you know, the rest is is kind of history for them. But he had uh, the funny moment at the speech. Did you guys watch the? Uh, you guys watch the ceremony? Mm-hmm. He had that funny moment at the speech where he kind of was like, you know, where well, I'll get the trophy, but y'all have to go play in the in the playoff. Well, can't win them all. It's well, tough, you could have won. You could, I mean, you definitely could have. Caleb Williams, they did. didn't lose that game because of him, though. And that's very true. I would make the same argument with Max Duggan against uh, Kansas State. I mean, you could Williams, say the same thing, right? Caleb no, he Williams, lost to a backup quarterback. He, he bogus. He made one. He of the, played his nuts off. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you can blame him for that, though. They got stopped on the one yard line three times in a row. He was balling, and he was dead tired. He ain't balling enough. <laughs> Anyways. He'd have won that Williams. game. He'd have won the Heisman. Here's Williams with the trophy. And uh, someone had an interesting um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Interesting. They noticed something interesting on tidbit. Twitter. Interesting tidbit. He's wearing Adidas, and he goes to a Nike school. I did not think about that one. That's an Adidas, I think, Burberry suit or Gucci suit. Yeah, I don't know about that, to How be honest you with see? you. How do you know? Yeah, I have no clue. But um, what I, I was going to say is someone had an interesting <laughs> tidbit information about the ceremony that he went and shook the first two hands of the people on the stage, and then Desmond Howard was the third. Or no, it was C.J. Stroud. Sorry, C.J. Stroud. Thanks. I was going to correct yeah, you. No, yeah. I was going to let you finish. And I, yeah, that was C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud but, came in, shook the first two hands, and then the third one was Desmond Howard, and he kind of went. Just, well, it doesn't like, well, also wasn't looking though. So. Yeah, yeah. And the Ohio State Michigan yeah, thing too. It's no, like say. I want them to play so bad in the championship. Yeah. So I would. I, mean, I think I everybody would hate does. that. Why? I would hate that. Why? I don't want to see that. Don't want to see what Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State, State, Michigan? Ohio State the Come championship. The national championship. Come no on, way, dude. dude. Would you want to see Michigan blow the snot out of Georgia? No. Or Georgia? My bad. I meant to say Georgia blow the brakes yes. off of Michigan. Yes. Much rather see that than Ohio State. I don't know. That's just me. But Dude, Georgia's like minus two hundred to win the the whole thing. Like already, yeah. Like they're already like a massive favorite to win. Yep. And then as they should, but I'm gonna say I can. I, I don't believe in our offense. That. If Jason Smith and Jigbo would have played in this game, <sighs> <laughs> he 
He's it special. Might, it might have got ugly for Georgia. He's special. You got three first round receivers on the field at one time. Oh my god! I mean, it's happened before at Bama. Exactly. And we saw that went. Boys was balling. They were balling. So, um, before we kind of finish up, I did have one more piece for us on the college football thing. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, and uh, you guys said you have not seen these renders from TCU, correct? I have not. So, Texas Christian, uh, via Front's Office Sports, I'm going to oh, pull up the wow. tweet here. TCU has announced plans for a $40 million renovation and expansion of their athletic facilities, new football performance center, 10,000 square foot recovery center, outdoor warm-up area, expanded entryway, and the construction is expected to begin in 2024. Fellas, let's take a look at these shots. Pretty cool. Kind of seems like a a lower scale of like what Northwestern yep, did. Just exactly. Say That's kind of the. I was going to say that should look just like Northwestern. Yeah. Uh huh. So they're definitely the taking a little too. bit of inspiration there. Yep. A little yeah. bit of the, obviously the purple, but yeah. I mean, you can't blame them for that. But. <laughs> Definitely, that's what it feels like now. Obviously, TCU does it not have like the... It ain't like they green and gold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's still purple in our field house. <laughs> TCU does not have the luxury of being on Lake Michigan, so they're not no. going to be looking out of yeah. the water, but yep. still a really sweet setup there. Um, pretty cool render. And then if we go on to a little bit, look at that addition of like the ship going over top, too. Like Someone really was like, yeah, we need to put the plane uh, going through the sky there, too, with the little trail. Um, but we go to the next one. And this is the view from inside that window. Much more impressive than the outside. Yeah, that weight room looks holy looks shit. That looks spectacular. That is insane. Give them hell, TCU, in big neon letters. Sign me up, dude. Look at all those racks. And also, can a we, lot of racks. yeah, can we acknowledge like there's not a lot going on in that weight room to me? There's just like a lot of just racks and space, and it looks like you've got some machines over on the left hand side there, but just a lot of space. Very interesting use of space. Again, it's just a render, no, no final designs. It is just a render. You're correct. Now, I have a question for you guys. This glass, these glass on these buildings, like, we're right next to the practice field. You know there's going to be a football come sailing across and nail this glass. What kind of glass are we using in these type of uh, buildings? What do we think? Probably, you got to use the thick-ass bulletproof, ass bulletproof glass. Yeah, you can definitely. bulletproof and that overkill? No, you can't You can't never be too safe in today's world. No, <laughs> no, that's, no he's right. And, like, Especially. with, like, storms and shit, like, if Texas, I think Texas yeah. get, like, badass storms. I yeah, don't know how far I they Texas is. For four years, yeah. But I think they get like badass storms like you got to. Hmm. If you can't have one of them fucking glasses break somebody squatting, yeah. that would be bad. That could be very bad. That's, talk about liability. That's liability. Yeah, they that, that's, sold the school to this yeah. young man family because y'all want to put regular. Is give them hell TCU? Is that like their. Is that their never heard, I've never heard of that. Neither had never. I. And then here it is on their wall. I haven't heard that either. Never seen that before in my life. But if we can go. Yeah, there's, there's, there's one more picture or a couple more. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. Is that like a hot tub or something? What is that? Yeah. Uh, could we be cold or a hot tub? Doesn't actually specify on there. What do we got going on on the uh, on the right side there? Are those shoulder pads or like awards? What's going on in that like, like I don't know. trophy case over there? Just a render. It is, but like it's very interesting to me. You got that ramp coming down the right side. Holy shit. Could you imagine sitting in this thing? That's unreal. Yeah, that's really nice. What do you think the cost in something like that is? I mean, like forty million. Look, oh, you're saying just like the pool part? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I don't know. I wonder if we can zoom in. I'm not really familiar with like the pool economy and what things. You know, I'm not really familiar, <laughs> with, I'm not familiar with the with the pool economy. Um, all right. Well, I tried zooming in and it didn't really work. Yeah, you finna so. break it, bro. Stop. I know. I am. <laughs> but I believe we had we had, might have one more. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We got a ground. We got a ground level yeah. view of the weight yep. room. Bingo. That is a lot of space. God damn. Thank you. Look how much space what I'm between saying. that rack. Like, Social distancing. Too much. Social distancing. Yeah, was this made with COVID standards in mind? Like, you could fit two more racks in this first row yeah. right here. Easily. Yeah. You just spread those out. That is very... They what are they getting active in that weed room. I know. Man. What are they going to be doing that warrants Pilates. this much space? And so, it's, it's good to notice as well, though, that sign up there that says TCU Athletics. This is not a football or whatever specific weight room. This is going to be used for... Um, I'm assuming a lot of their athletic teams. Now, football, obviously, is going to be one of the main users of this type of facility. But uh, good to know that a, a lot of teams would be getting use out of this. You got baseball, basketball. Looks like, what was that track and field up there, too? And soccer. I actually don't know if there's even a football picture up there on that banner. There's not. Maybe maybe it's <laughs> That's maybe very it's, interesting. Maybe it's bigger and it goes keep going left or something. Nope. Know. Looks like it gets cut off. Does it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, you can't really see it on that view. Yeah, but on here, say, it, it yeah. definitely does. Huh. So, football. Not uh, not and that was gonna be my next question for you guys is uh 
is this what getting to the playoffs can do for you? But apparently getting to the playoffs can't even get your picture yeah. on the banner <laughs> of your own weight room. So, well, do, do you know how much, mo- like, how much money do you get if you win the championship? Do you get, that's like, a great question. I have no I, clue. I, 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 yeah, I got to look that up. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, now, again, we'll, we'll stay on the topic of TCU. Is this a start of something big for Texas Christian? Is this going to be a one-hit wonder? Or can we going to see a little bit of residual success from these guys? I mean, I feel like for a while, TCU has been like a pretty good program. Yeah, but not even... Anywhere near They've this been level, average. Yeah, I would well, say not no, anywhere no. near this level. This has been an incredible season, but like, like you, have, you again, have a year like this, you're going to have a good recruiting class. Yep. And I'm not expecting like back to the playoffs next year or anything crazy no, like that. I, but like, I mean, let's start with this: Are they going to remain the best team in Texas? Will they stay over Texas? Will they stay over A and M? Like, will they stay over those types of teams? I that's mean, a good question. I think yeah. that's a, that's a better starting point. No, I don't. Think you don't so. think so? No, I don't think they so. Texas they, makes a step. They going. They going to have. They going to continuously have the third best recruiting class. In Texas, they're you know gonna be what, competing with Houston. What about this year? Even if they're really, you can't sell. You can't sell a religious school to kids, bro. That's I yeah, mean, that's true. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a component, but it's maybe harder. you show those kids this little these new renders. It's definitely hard. Don't look to at recruit. Texas renders. Yeah, you're true. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's and right. Texas A and M, they paying everybody a million dollars to come to their school, and they still suck. A million dollars talk. Yeah, they do. So they're gonna be con- they gonna every year they're gonna be competing with having the third best recruiting class. Like, think about if Notre Dame just wasn't religious. How crazy they would be every year. I don't know, man. Notre Dame, you know how small Notre Dame is, though? You ever been to Notre Dame? It's a small. It's a small school. No, it's not. Think about the... Think about how crazy they would be. But I don't know. I, I don't know, I don't know, know if I agree with that, though, because that's part of the allure of yeah. Notre Dame is those type of kids that go there is it's about the religion, and it's about, like... That's what Notre Dame is, and almost like their standard and all those type of things. Sure. I don't think it has. I'm saying, I'm it's not saying. nearly the appeal of like any other big programs. If it wasn't, if TCU wouldn't like, like kids don't want to do that. I'm. T- I went to private school. Don't nobody want to do that. And a lot of kids who get recruited is going to private school. They tired of it. You don't want to go to religion in the first thing in the morning. You, I'm t- Kobe. You don't. You don't. Well, there's a lot of conviction. In the I, podcast. I can feel this right now. I can, I can feel this right now. I'm uh, Thank you for listening, D1 Rejects. Uh, if you've watched on YouTube, I appreciate you. And uh, if you're listening anywhere else, thank you for making it this far. Uh, leave a little comment. Who should we get on next? Die traumatized from private school. We'll leave it off there, folks.